Exosomes by Anant Murthy with Nguyen Labs. An essential part of human survival is being able to communicate. In the modern world, this includes sending emails and texts. Just like humans, cells need to communicate to survive as well. Just as we have emails, cells have exosomes. When we send emails, we include important information, such as instructions on how to do something. Cells do the same, but in their exosomes, they use RNA, which is essentially a genetic language. Now let's say we want to send something more than just an email. Maybe we want to send our family and friends gifts or items that they might need or want. We package it, ship it in a truck, and the package reaches the destination. Cells do the same, also with exosomes. They put the package in the exosome, such as a protein or phospholipid, send out the exosome to the target, and it releases the package to the recipient. Let's dive deeper into how exosomes are packaged and released. Now the cell on the left is the sending cell, and the cell on the right is the recipient. Inside the sending cell, the red object represents RNA, the yellow object is the phospholipid, and the purple star is the protein. The green circles represent multivesicular bodies, or MVBs for short. This is where the exosomes are made and packaged with the certain cargo they're carrying. This is like the shipping center for sending a package. To enter, the cargo buds into the MVB, taking some of the MVB's membrane with it. This membrane makes the exosome that surrounds the cargo. Enter the exosome, it's ready to be shipped. The MVB moves to the cell's membrane and attaches to it. Now it pushes the exosome out into the extracellular fluid. This is like sending a truck out onto the highway or clicking send on an email. An important function of exosomes is that it protects the cargo from enzymes in extracellular fluid that could potentially break down and degrade the cargo. The exosomes bud through the target cell to enter it. This is like the package being dropped off at your doorstep or the email being delivered to the recipient. Sometimes the exosome doesn't bud into the cell but binds to the membrane, like the protein exosome at the top. Once the exosome enters the cell, there are two potential pathways it can take. First, on the left, is the delivery pathway. Here, the exosomes go to wherever the cargo is needed. The RNA and proteins may go to the nucleus, the fossil bit may go to the membrane, or any other organelle that needs the cargo. On the right is the endosomal pathway. In this pathway, the cargo is broken down. This exists as a protective measure for the recipient cell. First, the exosomes enter the early endosome. The early endosome then matures into the late endosome, and then enters the lysosome. Once it enters the lysosome, the acidic enzymes inside the lysosome break everything down. Now, let's look at the variety of functions that exosomes play a role in, both positive and negative. First, let's start with the negatives. The spread of exosomes throughout the body is associated with neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Exosomes are also associated with the beginning of T-cell apoptosis. This is when immune cells self-destruct. Hepatitis C and other viruses spread through the body by sending signals and exosomes. Similarly, tumors release exosomes containing cancer signals to further spread the cancer throughout the body. However, exosomes do have positives. They aid in many important neurological functions such as brain plasticity. This is a, neuro this is a recovery process the brain needs to function. They can also be sent to activate the immune system to produce T cells and B cells. When a stem cell is implanted in the human body, Exosomes can help incorporate the foreign cells. Lastly, research into putting spe specific cargo into exosomes can help with drug delivery as exosomes can be put anywhere in the body. This video would not be possible without Dr. Julianne Nguyen, Emily Bonacquisi, and Natalie Smith. This was done in conjunction with the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and the National Science Foundation.